I don't hang out with anybody that I used to hang out with in 2017. As far as members only, like I got no, yeah, I got no hate in my heart towards them boys, no bitterness in my heart towards them boys. But I don't, I don't, I, I don't have any type of relationship with members only mm -hmm. like at all. Yo, can you hear me? Yo, what's going on, man? Yeah, I can hear you. What you, uh, what you up to today? Shit, bro. Honestly, I just came back from uh, doing this uh, thing. It's kind of like this uh, live performance thing. Yeah, I just finished doing one of those. Word. And um, yeah, so now we, we, we here, you know what I mean? Fire, man. Which, which song did you perform? Is it off the new album or? Yeah, it's off the new album. It's uh, one of my singles called All In that I'm going to probably be dropping. That's probably like the third or like the fourth single we're going to be dropping off the album. It's weird, but I started listening to you around the time you dropped uh, Run, which is pretty like far into your disc it's not like anything old you know so right 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 yeah but i think that's just when i when i started fucking with you i there's something about the beat really caught my attention and um then i started listening to the older stuff that your fans call like classics and whatnot right um yeah yeah, yeah. but i mean it is what it is i really yeah, yeah it, is, song, it is what so. it is it's like it's, it's, a, it's a it's a bittersweet thing you know yeah but i genuinely did enjoy the new song uh lost in time with coil ray I'm glad you liked it. I'm honestly because I was so nervous to put that shit out, dude. It was like ridiculous. I hear you. You know, it's a, it's a totally new sound, but I feel like the singing direction you're going in, um, I like it because it's not like a generic singing. You know, not to like kind of hate on anyone else, but I I have seen a lot of artists who tend to sound uh, similar when they're trying to go into the the singing, um, you know, genre. Yeah. Um, but I, right. I feel like when you did like the high pitch voice, it kind of reminded me of like something Kanye would have done on like uh, 808s and Heartbreaks or or like Fade. On, I was listening know. to, I was actually listening to a lot of, my bad to cut you off. Mm -hmm. I was actually listening to a lot of uh, like Man on the Moon 1 and 2 and like 808s and Heartbreak and just like College Dropout. Just a lot of, I was listening to a lot of uh, soulful shit yeah. when I was coming up with melodies and stuff because I just kind of find myself with melodies. Mm -hmm. I find myself leaning towards uh, a lot of like, soulful like blues like r&b type melodies or like type uh scenarios like subject matters and all that so yeah um that really that really did inspire me a lot so it's kind of crazy that you that you that's point that crazy. out to be honest that's crazy i figured i was like um i just fuck with it because it was creative you know it wasn't anything like generic um and then the beat kind of reminded me of like uh have you heard fade from the life of pablo yes yeah. uh, so i was like, I was like that's kind of fire but um how the link up with uh with coy larray even happened in general so like I've been a, a fan of Koi's music for like a minute now. You know what I mean? Yeah. She was definitely like, you know, one of those artists on my radar that like I definitely saw a lot of potential of what she already is doing and what like what she can do mm -hmm. within like, you know, the next year to two years. And um when I made the record, I just thought it me and my manager, we just really thought it would be cool if we got um a female's perspective yeah because the whole time you know i'm talking about how i need a woman and like you know i don't need her to leave and right. how it's like it kind of sucks right you know the type of decisions that she's making with her life because i kind of feel like that i could like save her from that yeah. i wasn't necessarily that big of a fan of lost in time when i first made it oh really damn i i feel like it it was just so different it was just so different honestly this is like my first time like ever singing like ever yeah i mean you told me you're kind of nervous about putting uh, it out right like why do you think that is? You know, do you feel like your fans would be kind of iffy about the new sound? You know, when you when you give them so much of something, yeah. that's all they expect. You know what I mean? And I kind of just want to show that I'm just more than what people try to like box me in. You know what I mean? Like you see me, you see the face tats, you see the like the the very like nonchalant, not giving a fuck attitude, and you automatically kind of like just well, not you, but just you know the masses. People will assume kind of automatically what you're like, yeah. Yeah. people automatically just you know put me into this box in the scenario yeah and then it's like you're in that box we don't want you out of that box yeah did you kind of get bored of the old son you were doing i mean yeah i could only imagine how jay-z felt and i'm not comparing myself to jay-z but just um as an example mm -hmm. i can only imagine how jay-z felt about talking about dope like his whole life mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? After a while, it's like, how how much more albums can I tell you about dope or about, you know, life on the streets or this or that? There's only, like, you know what I mean? There's a point in time where you're not even living that anymore. Like, you're far past that. Right. I feel like, you know, with that 
2017 Florida sound with, with like X, Ski and all of them and you, you know, do you feel like that sound has kind of like died down in, in 2020? Oh, no, 100 percent, because um, I feel like the. Uh, it's a it's a two way street on whose fault it is. Okay. You know what I mean? I definitely feel like it's the artist's fault, a hundred percent. We gotta hold the artist accountability, but we also have to like hold the consumers ac- accountability for that too. Yeah. Because I feel like all three of us, including X, especially X, you know what I mean, set the bar so high that it's like those are like some really big shoes to fill in. Or that's those are like some really to really outdo that you know what i mean and i feel like that that sound could have been evolved and could have brought you know like new fruits to like a basket if people evolved that sound as opposed to copying that sound and trying to do their best version of that sound you know what i mean i hear you i think i i totally get you because i see like still now in 2020 people are making these songs that are like specifically made for like triller you know where it's like you hear the loud 808s you got like the aggressive rapping, um, sort of like those Ronnie J type beats, right? I think when you copy an artist's whole sound and you build a fan base based off of people missing that original sound from that original artist because that artist is no longer here to provide that sound, that's kind of corny. Yeah, you know what I mean? Now I get that. I've, I've been actually watching your your lives here and there and just kind of keeping up with, with your social media. Obviously, there was like all this talk of you retiring, right? And um, yeah, I, I really wanted to ask you about that because even myself, I've been getting thoughts of like taking a long break from it. Um, so I kind of yes. wanted to know like how you got those thoughts and, uh, and and what did you do to, I guess, kind of get over them? So me and my manager, we were having a really big discussion one day mm-hmm. and he was like, I personally feel like within rap music, you've done everything that you can do. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You've like, you've made double XO you've you trended on youtube solidly off of a fucking freestyle uh-huh. you know what i mean like no beat in the background or nothing just you just rapping like people kind of know already that you could rap and after a while i just thought about it and i was just like well what the fuck else do i have like more to bring to the table other than that i know i can bring more but it was like what else in rap music specifically mm-hmm. like do i have to bring to the table and i'm kind of always looked at as like the black sheep you know what i mean how so it's always just because, like, probably mainly, like, for certain people that bump certain artists, and I'm not going to say who, but I'm probably not as aesthetically pleasing okay. to their ears or to their, their, their forte of liking music. Mm-hmm. But then again, it's like a double-edged sword because I kind of am. It's just maybe they just don't like the way how I look. Mm-hmm. Maybe they just don't like the fact that I'm this or don't like the fact that I'm that or may- for whatever whatever reasons you know what I mean there's little things that people could be like oh yeah I fuck with him but you know what I mean mm-hmm. so I kind of felt like that was kind of just thrown on me a lot mm-hmm. like people kind of just didn't give me a chance it would always be like prejudgment like oh fuck this kid then they'll listen to me and they'll be like okay yeah now you're fine but you know what I mean there was always like that but I'm just, it's like it's like being in high school you know what I mean and like sitting at a table and every single time that you get your lunch, you sit at that table, there's always those group of kids that like run the whole table. And they're like, nah, don't sit here. Mm. Sit over there. So after a while, every single time that I'm trying to sit at the table and I'm just trying to eat my lunch, you know what I mean? And just like, you know, converse with everybody, try to get to know everybody. They're constantly telling me to get away from the lunch table. Mm. All right, I'm not going to go sit at the lunch table anymore. No. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. now, now, are you saying this based off like comments you see or based off things that people have actually said to you? It's both. Okay. Okay. Both. You know what I mean? So fast forward, we listen to the album. We realize that I'm just singing on the whole album. And my manager's like, bro, like, I feel like you've done everything that you can do as a rapper. Like, you know, I feel like you're at a point where, you know, you're 23. You got a lot of things that you can still do within your life and your career. Why would you just limit yourself to just rapping? Like, you know, I think it's time for you to step into a new chapter of your career. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But the best thing that you can do is try. When I when I said that I retired, I basically meant that, you know, I retired from, from rap quote, music? unquote, like rap, rap yeah. music. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to be rapping as much yeah. as people would, you know, really want me to rap. Yeah. I'm going to do something different with my career. I'm at a new chapter of my life. I'm at a new beginning in my life. And if, you know, people want to be a part of the ride, yo, 
the fucking doors are all open. Everybody could fit on this roller coaster. You know what I mean? I did hear you say something on the live where you were like, you know, people, more people show you love when you mention that you're retiring versus when you would like put out a song, you know? Like the only time they really want to give you your type of respects due is when they feel is these three things. They got to feel like you out for the count. They got to either feel like, you know, you're giving up yeah. or you're retiring, quote unquote, yeah. or you got to be dead. Some sort of tragedy. Pretty much something. something has something something has to happen to you to where people feel specific pity for you and be like, damn, like maybe his shit is far. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like maybe that maybe and, and I knew that's how people act. So I was just like, yo, I was literally talking to my manager and I was talking to like everybody in my camp. I was like, bro, watch me say this. And when I say this, I'm not even really doing this for attention. I'm doing this to really prove a point to my, not just like myself, but to Everybody else around me, and yeah. I had hella artists DMing me, like artists I didn't even fucking know paid attention <laughs> to me. Yeah. Like, bro, we gotta, we gotta make some shit before you retire. <laughs> like, why I gotta be before I retire? Yeah. Like, <laughs> that makes no sense. Like, what you put a benefit from that? <laughs> like, that that must be like, frustrating. Yeah. Oh, no. yeah, 2017 era. You know, you probably hung around a lot of different people than you hang around now, right? Um, I don't honestly. I don't hang out with anybody that I used to hang out with in 2017. Like, I guess, members only, like Ronnie J, like people like that. Do you have zero relationship with them now? Or it's just kind of like here and there, you'll see each other? Well, well, as far as members only, like, I got no, I got no hate in my heart towards them boys, no bitterness in my heart towards them boys. But I don't, I don't, I, I don't have any type of relationship with members only, like, at all. Mm -hmm. I've been out of members only 2017, 18, 19, for almost four years now I've been out of members only. Yeah. It's long time. so yeah you know people, yeah it's a bit it's almost going on five you know what i mean it's been a very long time yeah. and you know people just do their own thing at the end of the day and just part ways at the end of the day like i got respect for them you know they don't they don't bother me i don't bother them i wish them nothing but success and and keep you know jose's name alive as as the original plan was for them and you know i can't get mad at it yeah. i can't hate on them for that you feel me i respect that man i think uh uh like maybe in the future if if i'm sure the fans all want to see some sort of like link up or whatever but like people gotta understand like you know you don't really know what goes on behind the scenes bro i appreciate it a lot um seriously like i, I respect what you do and uh, and keep staying different i think that's like one of the best things no thank you bro i really appreciate that shit bro it's a breath of fresh air like hearing that honestly bro hell yeah and keep doing the singing don't be nervous man just bro it's hell yeah hell yeah hell yeah hell yeah, yeah. all right yeah, have a nice day okay all right, man, likewise. Yeah. Yo, guys, hope you enjoyed that quick little FaceTime interview. I'm going to keep it honest. I'm getting tired of only doing these virtual interviews. Um, I know we started the deep dive series so I could kind of compensate for that and make this more fun. But I feel like I should just take the risk and travel to the States, you know, somewhere like L.A. or Atlanta and just get some one on one interviews for you guys. I just want to feel that fun again. You know, like it's getting kind of KTO is getting a bit, I guess, boring or like demotivating or unmotivating. I don't know what the right word is, but um, let me know in the comments if you think that's a stupid idea. Um, anyways, let's do the top comment of the week. So on the last video, Rain World Executive said, you have an amazing series and channel, bro. You deserve more recognition. Keep doing you. Great questions. In every interview, you make it chill and it flows like two friends talking. Man, that's dope. I get that specific feedback um, often and it really makes my day. So uh, he's talking about the Roy Woods interview. So go watch that if you haven't. It should be somewhere on the screen. And so is the subscribe button. Go press subscribe for so you can see next week's video.